Hi, so I'm Kevin Fox from PNNL. Um, I kind of work on the, the more low-level infrastructure things. Um, I'm going to be talking about virtualization and containerization a little bit. Um, so our site has deployed uh, a big pile of grid services uh, for the collaboration. Um, we have many direct servers, including the distributed data management system Malachi was talking about earlier. Um, we have uh, several gatekeeper services and many test and development servers. Uh, two Condor CEs currently, uh, with each with a direct site director, uh, an HT Condor cluster, and a squid cache. Um, we have uh, some leadership class facility CEs, which is a site director, and then integrations with uh, different uh, HPC clusters. Uh, we have some SEs uh, that are currently best man two based, uh, grid FTP and backed by Lustre, the, the Lustre high performance file system. Uh, we have the Bell 2 DB uh, system uh, that uh, has a bunch of components in it, uh, a REST service, a UI, a payload service, a squid cache, and a Postgres relational database. Uh, an FTS3 server, a couple of CVMFS uh, stratum servers. Um, we have a GUMS cluster for authorization and a bomb server that uh, we host multiple VOs out of. Um, kind of a, a note to system mints in the, the group, um, like me, uh, there's been kind of a change in, in methodologies and system administration in the last six years or so. Um, it's kind of not had much of a name until recently. Um, it's kind of been coined cloud native uh, recently. And what cloud native is about is, is focusing really around what the users care about. Uh, users care about uh, services and not machines that are hosting the service. Um, if you want to read up more on this, this topic, uh, look up uh, pets versus cattle in Google. The, the basic idea being that system administrators, system administrators are used to thinking in, in terms of pets. They have a machine, they give it a name. If it gets sick, they nurse it back to health. Um, but in, in the cloud native methodology, you have cattle. You, you, you herd a, a set of cattle, and if, if one gets sick, well, you replace it with a new cattle. Um, to kind of quote Yoda, we have to unlearn what we've learned over the years. Um, and kind of a, a, a trick to save some time, uh, if, if you're doing both pets and cattle, try to keep them on separate systems. It, it does help uh, prevent some problems. Um, the, the path towards this kind of infrastructure is kind of a long one. Uh, we've gone through many iterations at our site we originally were given a, a set of individual machines. Um, we had enough of them that just sticking a CD in each machine and installing it wasn't an option. So we set up some automated provisioning using Cobbler and uh, Kickstarts. Uh, that worked pretty well until we had a, a lot of services to manage. Uh, provisioning individual machines for the services was a lot of work uh, and, and wasted a lot of resources. So we uh, implemented a system to do virtual machines. To, to do virtual machines. Um, this helped us pack more services onto to physical machines, uh, but provisioning took you know, several hours to days to do, and so people were putting more services onto VMs than, than they really needed to uh, on, on individual machines. Uh, so, we deployed an OpenStack cloud. Uh, that allowed us to much more quickly launch virtual machines. Uh, creating a new virtual machine took tens of minutes instead of hours or days. Um, that allowed us to create a virtual machine per service or, or even multiple virtual machines per service. Um, that allowed us to, to provide more highly available services and scalable services. but even still had its own drawbacks. Uh, one of the biggest ones that we hit was uh, syn synchronizing so software, making sure every instance had the same software on it. Depending on when you launched your instance, uh, you could get different versions of your software 
and that particular VM would behave differently than its brethren. So we, we tried to solve it with uh, repository mirrors initially uh, using Cobbler. Um, it was a lot of work to maintain a, a repository set for each application. And uh, modern distros are really good at trying to get updates from upstream over the internet. And so we had several times where it just managed to grab updates uh, even though we told it to not go so far. Uh, so we, we changed strategies a little bit and we switched to using containers for our applications. Uh, that actually has solved the problem. So we can, we can build a container, we can test it, and we can deploy it on several virtual machines or physical machines and make sure that the software that we're running is always the exact same thing that we tested. Uh, this led to yet one more problem in that we were running multiple containers per VM and then trying to manage them all across a sea of uh, VMs. And that was getting to be a lot of administrative overhead. So just like we added OpenStack to manage virtual machines, we added Kubernetes to manage our containers and that, that solved uh, the management problem. And, and we're, we're currently transitioning uh, much of our, our workload over to Kubernetes at this point. Uh, we talked about a few of these, but we have a bunch of infrastructure services that we've deployed so that we can manage all of our grid services. Uh, we have Kubernetes and we're, we're using the Docker engine to host the containers, OpenStack with KVM. We have a software defined storage system, Ceph, uh, for maintaining the state of all of our services. Uh, we use GitLab for um, maintaining uh, some of our software artifacts and scripts and, and things. Uh, GitLab is just an open source on-site kind of version of GitHub. Uh, we use the Lester High Performance File System. Uh, we have uh, a couple load balancing, high availability solutions that are built into OpenStack and Kubernetes. Um, we've deployed Perfsonar for maintaining our network links and performance. Uh, we have Prometheus and Grafana. Uh, Prometheus uh, gathers metrics from all uh, your services and Grafana lets you, you make nice graphs to, to see the state of it. Uh, we've deployed CheckMK, which is kind of a Nagios replacement, uh, checking up on the hosts and, and seeing if they're healthy and letting us know if they're not. We use Elasticsearch for centralized logging. You know, when you have as many services as we do, you need to put them somewhere else you can access them or otherwise you're spending a lot of time going in and hunting. Uh, we use the 389 directory server for uh, LDAP, uh, Cobbler for provisioning and have some NFS servers for miscellaneous uh, storage. Uh, kind of one of the lessons that we've learned is that metric and log gathering is very important uh, to system problem analysis. Um, we started off with Nagios and it just didn't scale very well. Uh, we replaced it with CheckMK. Um, it functions similarly. Uh, it has checks that go out on each of the hosts, check things like, you know, are your disks healthy? Uh, other smart errors, uh, th those sorts of things. Um, it's, it's still a little bit static in its config though. Uh, if you have services that come and go, it doesn't handle them very well. And it, it's still very host oriented. Uh, we deployed Prometheus, uh, which is a cloud native tool for gathering metrics and then alerting based on queries. So where it really shines is you, you gather metrics about your service, how well it's performing, and it, you, it can send out an alert that something happened at a given time. And then you can go back through the history of what was happening on the, the node or with the container at the time and, and cr look at, oh, the CPU load was high or, oh, the disk uh, capacity suddenly peaked because another VM was using it. And lets you really dig in and figure out after the fact what had happened. Uh, we use Kibana, uh, Elasticsearch, and various log shippers to get all of our data from our containers and our VMs to Elasticsearch for indexing and searching, and then we use the Kibana website uh, to let us easily crawl through the logs and find what we're interested in. And then Kubernetes itself has some built-in uh, metric gathering, and it, it has some functionality to automatically replace uh, sick containers and, and, and do some self-healing. Uh, 
another uh, lesson kind of in, in this this uh, category is uh, give your give all your users a load balancer to talk to instead of an instance. Um, and, and whenever you can, back it with multiple instances of the software. Um, so you know your, your users talk to load balancer, they get redirected to one of the instances that, that hosts the uh, software. This allows uh, an instance to, to die or have a problem and you know most of the rest of the system continues to function. Uh, when it's not possible due to software, con uh, software design issues with the software you're trying to deploy, try to make it as very quick as possible to redeploy. Because you know when, when it breaks, you want to fix it as, as soon as possible because your users will know. Um, you do this, for example, by, by making sure your, the storage for your service is separated from your actual service, and then you, you make uh, the service redeployable, like put it in a container and make it managed by something like Kubernetes so it can relaunch it as soon as it dies. Uh, with this kind of arrangement, it can self-heal in seconds. Uh, an, another lesson learned is, is separate your build and your deploy steps of your system. Um, so so you, you build an artifact, you can then test it, you make sure that it's, it's what you want, and then you, you push it somewhere to a, like a software repository uh, so that your instances can grab it, and then you deploy it to all the members of your, your load balancer. Um, an example of how to do this with Docker and Kubernetes, you do a Docker build, you give it a tag, and then w once you're happy with the container you built, you push it to a repository. Uh, you you uh, then can deploy it on your system using a, a system like Helm. You give it a name, you tell it which version you want, and it will deploy the load balance, d deploy your instances to your load balancer. You can then upgrade that service by just updating the the version of your image you want to use. Uh, another pattern that we've found very useful at our site is doing canary deployments. Um, what this means is you replace one of your instances with a new instance, and you wait a little bit, and you check to see whether it's doing well. Um, if it's doing well, then you can go ahead and you can upgrade all your other instances. If it's not, you roll back to the previous version. And what this means is, you know, if you have three active instances, only a little bit of traffic is going to this n new service, and if it goes wrong, not all of your users are affected. It, it's a much more minimal uh, problem if you actually encounter a problem. Um, Kubernetes itself supports this kind of deployment. Uh, in, your, in your object for Kubernetes, you tell it how many replicas you want, you tell, you, tell it you want a rolling update, you want to. You tell it that you can have more than more one more than what replicas say, and that you can have one less running, and wait 60 seconds in between starting each container. And once once you tell it to do this, it will delete one instance. It'll make uh, a new instance that you told it to to launch, and then you can use the the kubectl rollout pause deployment command to stop it from making any more progress. And then you wait until you're, you're satisfied that it works, and you can tell it to resume and do all the rest, or you can tell it to undo the deployment and go back to the state before you were doing anything. Um, the 20 minute talk is not really enough to talk about all the various software that we, we run, so I'm just gonna give a, a couple examples of software that you may have heard of in, uh, a little bit, but don't know too much about, or um, that you haven't heard about that you might want to look at. So Ceph, uh, we use this a lot. It's a uh, software-defined storage. Uh, it's very fault-tolerant, tiered, and replicated storage. Um, some of its claims to fame, it uses cheap nodes. You don't have to use uh, nodes with special uh, RAID controllers or uh, a fiber channel SAN. It's just a node with a pile of disks attached to it. Uh, it replicates your data across multiple nodes. Um, this allows any single uh, machine to uh, die, and the system will continue to host all your data. Um, you can tier it so you can have SSDs or disk-based storage. 
uh, and each tier can be scaled out uh, very far. Uh, its performance is only okay because it's doing a lot of replication, uh, but it's rock solid. Uh, we actually forklifted a rack of our storage, uh, our, our entire Ceph system from one rack to another, one node at a time, while the system was live and in production and nobody even noticed. Uh, Kubernetes, it's a service-oriented service container orchestration engine produced by Google. Um, they've been doing container orchestration for the last decade, so if, if you've used Google Search or uh, Gmail, you've used systems managed by something very similar to Kubernetes, its previous, its predecessor. Uh, it supports container scheduling, che check, uh, checking and, and healing, uh, it has built-in load balancing. Uh, it can provision your storage for you. Uh, it can run on top of VMs or bare metal or both. Uh, we've actually got it deployed across our OpenStack and bare metal. Um, it can support auto-scaling of your services, and if it's running in a cloud, it can even request more resource directly from the cloud. And it has a package manager these days that's similar to Yum or Apt, so you can get cloud-scaled applications by doing a Helm, uh, Helm install package. Um, also mentioned Prometheus uh, and Grafana. Uh, it, it does, Prometheus does a storage and indexing and has a query engine. So it, it reaches out to all your services, grabs metrics, and then you can query across them. Uh, the same queries that you write you can have it send a page to your pager or email or Slack. Um, so it's very easy to write queries in. You can also use the Grafana uh, engine to, to make graphs and, and display them. Um, it's also incredibly easy to write plugins that you can gather data from. Uh, it's just HTTP with a, a text file on the other end. So if you can write a CGI script in whatever language you want, you can get data into it. Uh, logging is also really, I kind of talked about this earlier, we, we do Elasticsearch uh, for, for the actual storage of the, the records. Uh, we've used various log shippers, uh, FluentBit, uh, FluentD, and Logstash. Uh, all of them have worked well for slightly different purposes. Um, and there's a nice web UI called Cabana for, for letting you search uh, based on various fields or uh, you know, looking at the actual text and, and digging in through problems. And then you can also narrow it down by buckets of time. You know, if you knew about, about here is when the problem happened, you can easily narrow it in and then search through that, that set of time. You know, so you can easily search like across hosts or across services uh, depending on, on where you think the problem actually is. Uh, one more thing to note, you know, uh, looking toward the future, we'd like to kind of share some of the, the Helm packages and other things that we've done to deploy our, our site and, and see if we can get other people to help, you know, uh, contribute to this stuff. Uh, we're not really sure how to, the right approach to do that. Uh, somebody suggested the HSF might be a good forum for that, or maybe not, you know, if anybody has any ideas, you know, please let me know. We'd, we'd like to, to contribute. Once you have your infrastructure on uh, containers and Kubernetes, do you actually still need the OpenStack layer? So we originally, we originally built it in OpenStack. Uh, then we added some bare metal nodes to the cluster. And at this point, we're actually moving most of the workload off of the VMs and, and expect to be pure bare metal at some point.
So uh, you mentioned Czech MK for the for the checks to, to replace Nagios or similar things. Do you also use something to to take automatic corrective action? Um, not not presently out of that system. Um, Kubernetes itself, though, if it detects that there's problems, will automatically reschedule pods to different hosts. Um, so as we're moving more towards Kubernetes, that that system is providing that kind of self-healing right, right, but that, that's at the sort of more global level for the whole service, but something more more localized, like trying to restart something or so a process which fails. Q Kubernetes does that on a per host also. level as well. So, so it'll try to recover things if they crash on the individual machine. Mm -hmm. And if if that doesn't work, it'll decide the node is right. sick and it will move it to another machine. Okay. 